sailing. The art of going nowhere fast with maximum effort. Never a dull moment. Come on, wind. I know you want to. We're moving. Yeah, we are. When things do change out here, they can change very quickly. We need five more knots of wind. All right, so we've got to do whole thing. Wrangling. It's all good. We're not running the engine when the sun's out. And it's fabulous. Go, 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 go! It's like old school this is, two headsaws pulled out from side to side. You just always have to be prepared, you can't be complacent and think that just because it's champagne sailing one minute it's going to stay like that. This is Brilliant 2, a Kelly Peterson 44 built in 1978. This is us, the Smallwoods. And this is the story of our long overdue boat refit. Wait, this is the story of a mid-refit sailing adventure. Welcome along for the ride. We're just leaving Dunk Island. It's about nine o'clock in the morning. We've got a 45 mile run. This Rockner anchor is incredible. It's holding, the way it grabs when you put it in, just amazing. Right, are we up? Yeah, let's go. Turn left. Shame on. He wears the coat of shame! <laughs> oh dear. Right babe, I'm gonna put the main up, stop us rolling around, and then we'll set up the code zero and we'll see how we go. Code zero needs to be. Also, it's good for it to be nice and tight when you're furling or unfurling. I'm just going to go and make sure that everything is led as it should be. Do not want this going over the side unexpectedly or any other way. It's all good. All good up there. I'll put a bit more tension on it. Looking clear up there. 
you get any of this wrong and you could get in serious trouble there's not much wind at the moment seems to be off the beam we'll see what happens we'll put it out see if we get enough boat speed if we do we'll carry on sailing turn the engine off now we'll run the sheet we'll just go with a single sheet and we're not racing or anything so usually if we want to if we need to tack or jibe we'll just furl it run the sheet around the other side and then unfurl the sail you can't um, you can't tack with a code zero anyway as you just end up ripping it on a part of the boat but I'll just check that that's all running outside everything yep What's working? What speed are we doing? 12 knots of three. 11. I expect it'll pick up a bit. Stuart on. Our upwind sail didn't last long. With the wind backing, it was soon time to douse the mainsail. Right, I'm going to let the main out. Normally we'd head into wind to do this, but when you're flying a code zero, that's not practical. So in these light wind situations, we just point up slightly and let the boom out all the way instead. flying the code zero upwind or at least with the wind just forward of the beam. Now that we're going to be running more or less dead downwind we can add our 130% Genoa to the sail plan. Yeah that's a good angle for the Genoa as well. All right so we've got to do pole thingy. wrangling. 
pole wrangling. Yeah. The pole yeah. down hole yeah. is slackened off. Yeah. Now you can slack the topping lift, the up hole of the pole, slacken that off. And I'll get it set up on the pole. And slacken that one off. And put that in the drawers. So that's the up hall for the pole, that's the down hall, and this is the port side Genoa sheet. And now Shaz is going to lift this up, take up the slack. Three point three knots at the moment, downwind. There's about seven knots of breeze. All right, well, um, we'll get this up to the height now, babe. I'll help you pull it up. Ready? Yeah. There you go, that's about it there. All right, start pulling, young man. You gotta do better than that. Come on. Come on. That's what you got. I don't think we'll be using the main again today, so get rid of it, get it out the sun. A couple of thunderstorms around, one out to sea, a bit of development over the land here and there, nothing close to us. It's like old school this is, two headsails pulled out from side to side. I used to actually have really long poles, uh, like whisker poles, and the two headsails, instead of being angled back like they are here, they were actually angled in a forward V. And in those days they didn't have self-steering. So traveling downwind, the boat would actually self-steer because as, as the boat yawed to the wind, you'd get more pressure on this side and go back it's like dihedral on a plane so you'd um, be self-steering self-stabilizing system what we need is a few more knots of breeze we need five more knots of wind always good idea especially in the tropics put your sail away that's what the bag's for. Whenever you're not using it. We might have noticed we're stationary and we're back on Orpheus Island and it's raining again. Yesterday, after running 
pretty much downwind for most of the day in the sail configuration that you would have seen. Things changed very quickly towards the bottom of Hinchinbrook Island, didn't they? So the wind came up. By that point, we were just running with the code zero. We'd actually put the Genoa away. Because of the wind angle. Yeah, the, the wind had, had come more on our beam. Mm. And that was good. So we had one less sail to contend with. And um, just as we sort of started to edge away from the bottom of, of Hinchinbrook, the wind really came up. And we saw gusts of um, 20 knots, first of all, and we had the code zero up. And you were quite quick to yeah, jump on it. Was, it, was, it. The boat was starting to get overpowered very quickly. The wind came up really quickly. And um, it, was a, it was on the beam as well, as Shaz said and uh, there was a lot, I looked at the rudder indicator and there was a lot of um, a lot of weather helm and it was time to go and the boat was going well over seven knots and it was getting overpowered so we very rapidly put it away and put the Genoa up in its place. While we were actually furling the Code Zero for the first time the, there was a bit of an issue with the furling line, wasn't there? Yeah, that's because it's an endless furling line, there's actually a, a splice, it's an in, endless loop of line, so it's got a splice in it, and the splice somehow was just, I had trouble, it got caught up in the block basically, and um, took a while to, all, the, all, the, all, the, all during this time the wind seemed to be picking up, mm. and the boat was starting to round up and give us a full 20 knots um, apparent wind and which is just too much with the code zero up unless you're going dead downwind. So that was a sort of interesting... Um, Exciting. Yeah. And of course we didn't film any of this because as it all happened, <laughs> our first thought was just to deal with what was going on and we didn't really think to pick up cameras or, or anything like that, which There's is no a shame time. because, uh, you know, you could have seen how quickly things can change and also how um, something as simple as that furling line getting stuck. I mean, that just mm. doesn't happen in really calm conditions. Things no. only really tend to happen yeah. when things pick up. So it's... I think what it was was the cover was bunching up against the splice and it was just getting too thick to go through the, through the block. Mm. So after that, we had the Genoa up, as we've just said, and uh, it was a fairly boisterous romp in that very last bit to the top end of Orpheus Island. We're up in Little Pioneer Bay here, and we've got some interesting weather yet again. So basically to our south, they've had a trough coming up, which has been bringing lots of wet and wind and, and things like that. So Mackay and the Whit Sundays are having a pretty wet time of things. Um, we've had a few days of calm and uh, even sun and blue sky, but the monsoon trough is now coming down from the north and there's really no idea from any of the weather predictions, any of the sources we use, the bomb, predict wind, any of the apps of what exactly is going to happen it's just it's it's so hard to get it until um you know you can only really see a couple of days accurately and even then it just keeps changing all the time some predictions have got a cyclone popping up some haven't it's yeah so it, we're, we're staying put today and we'll have a little look again later today and first thing in the morning and plan on the next step but True to the whole of the trip, both north and south, the same thing rings true, that the only thing that's certain is that it's uncertain. It's so unpredictable, it's like, it's almost like we're in the, the intertropical inter convergence zone has moved down here and we've got the influences to the north of that and we've got the influences to the south of that and none of the weather models seem to agree and uh, it's hard to know. It's hard to know what to do, anyway. Yes, and the other lesson, of course, from yesterday is just to reiterate is that things can, when things do change out here, they can change very quickly. So you just always have to be prepared. You can't be complacent and think that just because it's champagne sailing one minute, it's going to stay like that. Well, that's why we're out here, isn't it? It's fun. Yeah. Not it's, boring. It's a challenge. challenge. Never a dull moment. <laughs> Needless to say, 
There were definitely no dull moments going forward and it certainly got wet, but more on that next time. So thank you for watching and stay tuned.